Alright, welcome guys to my first dev vlog. So today I'm going to be showing you a voxel rendering engine that I wrote in six months. Uh, this is six months of progress learning Vulkan, which is a graphic rendering API, and C++. Uh, I started all of this from scratch and uh, I wrote up a voxel rendering engine which is quite different to normal rendering engines. I'm going to keep going with this project. My aim is to add lighting and physics and some other cool stuff down the line. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to post monthly updates, so subscribe if you're interested in seeing that. Um, I'm going to show you how I got to this, which is six months of progress. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video and stay tuned. Alright, so now I'll show you a bit about the engine. So I chose Vulkan and C++ to write my game engine in. The reason I chose Vulkan was because there was a lot of stuff I wanted to do that I needed low level control to be able to do the fast rendering of voxels. And it's also cross platform and it's very efficient. And C++ again is very popular with programming. Uh, game engines and again, it's very efficient and fast if you use it right. So the rendering technique that I've gone and used is very different to most engines out there at the moment. If you look at this video right here, this is showing Assassin's Creed. This is showing what the computer sees really. This is the polygons in the scene and I'm not rendering polygons. Most games render polygons. I'm doing a technique called ray casting where you shoot rays out into the scene and that's how we render it. Because I want my game to be voxel based, this allows me to render voxels a lot more efficiently. If you look at this diagram right here, this shows what ray casting is, right? So as you can see, there's the camera and you've got, I've got three rays coming out. The rays go and hit the object. Based off the color of the object, that sets the certain pixel to that color. Now, ray casting is very fast, it's similar to ray tracing, it just doesn't do lighting, but it can render quite complex objects. So, you've probably heard a lot about ray tracing, which is what I want to implement next in my engine. So, ray tracing is when you actually bounce the light. So, the ray of light comes and hits the object, and it bounces off. That means that then you can get shadows, reflections, and all this kind of stuff. And it gives you really realistic visuals and lighting, but it requires a lot of computing power to do. Um, that is my final goal for the engine, but I'm working to get there. If you look at these pictures here, these show what I'm aiming to do. So these are done by certain artists. If you check in a link in the description, I've got a Pinterest link to all the artists here and their work. But you can see here that we've got these voxel scenes with very nice lighting, reflections, and quite small voxels. I'm aiming to have my engine to be able to render the, these kind of scenes in large scale. That's my goal. Now I'm gonna show you a few things that I did to get to this point. One advantage of using voxels is I can have an LOD system, which is level of detail. So it means things that are further away in the scene actually don't get rendered. So again, if you look at this diagram I've written, you can see I can have these split up. So each voxel becomes eight smaller voxels, which can either be there or not be there. And you can see level zero is our biggest voxel. And you can see then we go level one and then level two, and you can keep going to level 40, you know? You can just keep going. And that level tells you what kind of resolution we are at. The scene can be dynamically changing all the time. You look at one of these videos that I've recorded here, you can see the different colors. So red is the, the lowest level of detail and the green is the highest. And as you can see, as I fly around, you can see the engine loading in the voxels that are required to be rendered. So I'm doing camera culling 
on the fly because we know what voxels are needed. We can unload voxels that are not required for the camera's scene. As you can see here in this diagram, you have the camera view and you can see the blue voxels are loaded and the red voxels are not loaded. And this improves memory and speed of ray tracing. It loads in the voxels as the camera points towards it. This is from an earlier version, so it's a lot more efficient since then, but you get the idea. And in this one, you can see it loading from the top to the bottom. This is one problem I had. I, I fixed that, and now it, it sorts the loading and loads based on the priority. So what voxels will have the biggest impact on the view get loaded first. All right, so then there's one other thing that I need to talk about and is that is multi-threading. I haven't actually implemented any multi-threading at the moment, so my whole engine is running on one thread, which is the render thread. It's loading voxels and doing all that on one thread, which is not very efficient. It lowers the FPS, so I should be able to increase my FPS massively by splitting these things off into threads and I can do way more work in the same amount of time because, you know, most people do have multiple cores on their machines now. So that's one goal that I'm aiming to do. So now I'll just show you a few videos about what I made. So this first one is showing off the depth buffer in the latest version of the engine that I've got right now. The depth buffer is basically how far away each voxel is. And as you can see, you barely see any loading of voxels and I can fly around in this scene. Everything will be loaded instantly. You know, down the line, I do need to have some more interesting <laughs> things to look at than just random at the moment. But, you know, that's just how it is right now. <laughs> so this video here, this is the first thing I managed to get. This is rendering one root cube and a few cubes. And you can see it didn't render correctly. It took me ages to figure out how to get this working. You know, once I got that working, I could start to get multiple cubes going. So as you can see here, I know this was an attempt to get lots of cubes rendering. It did not work entirely. This is trying to save memory. As you can see, this did not work correctly again. We have just random black bits and holes and glitches and it's not really working. And then here, this video is the first time I managed to get a lot of cubes rendering. And as you can see, these cubes are way smaller than the big cube at the back which shows the engine's ability to render you know extreme detail anyway so i mean that's basically all i've got to show you for now i hope you guys enjoyed the video i'm going to be posting monthly updates on this channel showing the next things i'm working on what i managed to get done in the month my aim for this month is to finish off updating my rendering api and add some multi-threading and speed up the whole efficiency of the engine. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you guys then.